We're gonna call this video, How to Lime Wash Paint Your Wall, taught by someone who has done it one time and has no idea if they did it right, but loves the way it turned out. Hey work besties, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that a couple weeks ago, we did the bathroom. And by we, I mean I, and it took me a couple days, and I learned a lot from it because it's a different kind of technique when we're painting. And I've decided I'm also gonna do this wall too and kind of walk you through how I do it. Not a professional painter, I think we all know that. Let's start with the things that you're gonna need. Day one, we're priming the wall that's all we're doing today we're gonna let it dry and then we're gonna prime it again and then we'll get into like the fun stuff so for priming we need some of these fun rollers and then a thing to put it on these are all very technical terms right one of these on that you know what I'm saying some tape because we're gonna tape off everything because I do not trust myself to not just get paint absolutely everywhere one of these liner things and then of course we need the paint so I purchased the primer from the same place that I got the lime wash because it's specific for the lime wash and I'm like if I'm gonna do it I may as well do it right I don't want to have to do it again so I got this primer I think you can use any primer to be honest but this is the one that we're using for the wall it's from Portola paints this is this is the lime wash we got it's in the color duet I'm absolutely obsessed with the color it turned out so well it's described as like a terracotta blush that's what that's what sold me on it we'll get to that fun part tomorrow but today we're just all about the prepping so we got to remove the outlet covers we have to tape everything off and then we're just priming not overly exciting but let's get started tape you got to put it on the walls let's do it because we use such a big brush with lime washing you really want to cover up everything because it gets a little bit messy at least when i do it almost done the most boring part all right we're ready to prime super thrilling so We've got our roller on the brush. Our paint tray is ready. It's really not exciting because it's white primer on white paint, so it's actually a little difficult to see at times. It's necessary, I think. We want to give the lime wash the best opportunity to do its lime washing thing. I also am like fully debating doing the ceiling also. I'm just really dreading that angle of painting and how much that would hurt over time. So I'm gonna start with this wall, also see how much paint I have left after it. And maybe if I'm feeling up to it, I'll also do the ceiling. I'll be back when this is done. I'm calling it good. I'm saying that I'm satisfied with this effort for tonight. Now we're just gonna let it dry. We'll see you tomorrow. It's day two, nice and early, so we can get the primer on so that the second coat can dry and then we can start actually lime washing by the end of today, which is the exciting part. So. Second coat of primer, it's going on, let's do it. Today we're gonna start with a little more of a plan so I don't forget where I've gone. Primer is officially done and dry and now we're onto the exciting part where we start to actually lime wash paint. So a few things you're gonna need for this. One, your lime wash paint. I got pre-mixed paint, but you can do it with like a big tub of lime wash as well, I'm told, if you mix water with it. I don't know how to do that, then you actually don't use a lot of paint in this technique, so this gallon's gonna take me quite far. And then to apply it, you need a five, or I guess you could do a six inch brush as well. This is a deck stain brush. You can also use a masonry brush. Couldn't find one here. So this has been actually working quite well. And then I do recommend wearing a glove also on the hand that you're going to be painting with, which I did not do last time. And my hand was dry and cracked and maybe had a little bit of a reaction last time, but um, we're gonna learn from our mistakes and wear a glove. Other than that, something to put the paint in. I just picked up these little plastic, what are you called? Paint, reusable mini trim tray. Couple, couple things I learned from the first time is one, you gotta work fast. So there is no stopping this wall halfway through to take a break. And the trim, so I tried to do the trim last time with a separate brush. It's pretty inconsistent, so I'm just gonna try to do everything with this brush to kind of get some sort of consistency. We'll get started. I'll tell you kind of uh, the technique that I use. So let's get into it. You never wanna go over a spot that you've already gone over while it's still wet. So if you wanna to touch up the wall, let it completely dry first, cause we're gonna do two to three coats of paint. You wanna work one side of the wall to the other. So you're just continuously going along and you're not letting something dry and then going over it multiple times. You'll notice the consistency of this. I find it a lot more watery than regular paint. So it actually goes quite far. So don't pour a ton in it's very drippy so it, you should have something to catch it on the ground we're gonna apply it on the wall and we're gonna go in X motions 
spreading the paint out as much as possible. So we don't want to be able to see our paint brush strokes. You really want to spread that paint around. Bring it right to the end. And just keep working it down a little bit goes, I find quite a long way. And you don't have to stay just doing kind of X's. You can change up angles. You want to just make sure you're painting in all different directions. When I'm really, really stretching the paint out, it gives that dimension to it versus the streaks when you first apply the paint. You really want to separate that paint or push it as far as you possibly can. And I actually find it way easier to hold the brush from the bottom here because you can really push to spread. is done. You can kind of see how fast it dried as the clip went on. We're going to let this sit until tomorrow and then I'm going to go over it once more and then a third time with a watered down version of it. So I feel like that's what works the best. That was recommended. That's what I did in the last room and I'm really happy with how it turned out but it looks good. I like it. I like it a lot. We'll see you tomorrow. Make sure you reseal the paint also overnight because it will dry out. If you don't. Thanks, action. Day three of this project and we're on our coat number two of the lime wash. We're gonna do it exactly the same way that we did yesterday. You can kind of see there's certain areas on the wall where the X shapes overlapped but didn't get a ton of paint in one area and it kind of has the speckled look, which I think is really cool. But today I'm just gonna make sure that I apply a generous amount of paint over those areas so that it doesn't look super off as it dries on the next coat. Same thing as yesterday, and we're gonna apply one coat, wait eight hours today, and do the last one, and then we're done. Let's get to it. Safety first, don't forget the glove. Don't be like me. Your hand will thank you. The corners, I'm just trying to make sure that it doesn't get streaky, and the paint goes all the way in, but not too thick. Otherwise, it'll sit and look a little bit deeper of a color but potentially more streaky from what I found and I personally because I'm doing an accent wall I don't mind if the outer corners are a bit lighter because then it feeds into the other walls since they're white I'm making a mess <laughs> how did this happen that was from yesterday can you wipe that down please you might also be wondering why is he not helping you paint is it because he's lazy well I'll tell you the real reason I cannot get up um it's because I think there's like somewhat of a technique that goes into this and I think it would be pretty inconsistent if you had two people doing different techniques or you know spreading differently, not spreading the paint enough, spreading too much. So I feel like in order to get a consistent look throughout the wall, it's best to just have one person doing it and then it's nice to have someone to support, you know, if one of the brush hairs gets stuck in the wall, they can go pick it off. or. Like me, if you just flick paint everywhere, then they can go kind of clean that up or move the ladder as you go. So that's why I'm the only one painting.
exhausting arm workout, this would be the paint technique for you because my arm is on fire. Also, the stuff dries so quickly, you've really got to remember kind of where you've painted because I already painted this, but that's fully dry. But you can kind of see a line down here. You gotta work fast. High stress situation. Do you work well under pressure? You're gonna find out doing this painting. And there you have it. Our second coat is officially on, so we're gonna let this dry completely, and then we're gonna do our third coat, which is a watered down coat, which goes a little bit quicker. But it does get a little bit messier because it is quite moist, if you will. We're gonna let it dry and see how, uh, see how it turns out. We'll come back in a couple hours and do the third and final coat. So it's about eight hours later, it's completely dry. And to be honest, I'm not sure I wanna do a third coat on it because I really like this kind of veiny texture that's come through. That's the thing with lime wash. I feel like you just kind of have to read the room with it and see what you like. I could do a third coat. If I was gonna do a third coat, which I did when I did the bathroom, I took basically half paint, half water, and did a really watered down, same technique version of it. And I feel like that completed the look down there. But I was also learning as I went, so I definitely made a few mistakes and wanted to kind of correct. But I'm really happy with how this has kind of turned out and I really like the color that it is. So I'm actually gonna keep it. So am I professional now? I don't know. Maybe I'm just so experienced, I'm just a two-coater. We're gonna take the tape off of this and show you the final product. Let's do it. It's all right, we can fix that with tweezers. And there you have it. We've officially finished our lime wash paint job. All the tape is off and we're ready to go. I really like this technique. I'm very happy with how it turned out. I'm probably gonna do a bit of the ceiling in here as well because I still have paint left. I've only probably used half of a gallon and I've done a bathroom and one wall in a primary room. And something else I thought that would be really cool if you do have leftover paint is to just get a blank canvas and then lime wash that and hang up that painting somewhere in your house because I think it could create really cool texture and make a really good wall hang. And if you're doing an accent wall like I am, then you could actually add the color or the paint to like another part of the room to help carry it through for consistency. Isn't that genius? I don't know. I got that idea like an hour ago and I was like, I am gonna do that. Maybe it's the smartest thing ever. Maybe not, who knows. Anyways, thank you for joining in on my DIY of lime wash paint, as DIY as you can make it if you like pre-bought it. Hope you learned something, and I'll chat with you soon. Toodaloo. I know, you're welcome for making the room look beautiful.